Hey, yeah, what's up? This is Cypher Marcello Currents back up in this rain, back up in this. This video is gonna be about false prophets. I'm gonna get straight to the to the chase. I'm gonna cut straight to the chase. Alright, um, so basically there's an American definition of a false prophet, and there's a biblical definition of a of false prophet. Okay. So the biblical definition is basically someone who prophesies something and it doesn't come to pass it's not true it never happens they speak some out their mouth saying this is going to happen that's going to happen and it doesn't happen okay that's the first definition that's that's a that's the biblical false prophet the american false prophet is someone that is a spiritual leader not a, not even necessarily a prophet someone that is a spiritual leader that um contradicts their uh their uh their spiritual walk with god so in some way they do evil or or they're deceptive in some way and this uh is what americans call a false prophet okay so we have two different de definitions okay the person that y'all talk about the american community is talking about that that might not even be okay you could have a, a real prophet that um, contradicts their spiritual walk with God. They can prophesy and be close to God, prophesy and still make mistakes. There's no perfect Christians. There's no perfect prophets. So if you see a person make a mistake, there's people in the American community that would try to zap that person and say, that's a false prophet. See what they're doing? That person just sinning. When you become, if you're a prophet, you would not be perfect. In fact, you would have way more struggles than the average person. You have way more spiritual warfare than the person that's judging. That the person that's doing all the judging, a person that's doing all the judging will have none of the spiritual warfare that a prophet or a preacher go through. That's why I don't judge preachers, because um, a lot of people don't even know what they go through. The spiritual war they deal with, with being high ranking spiritually. The people that's already destroyed by Satan, they don't, they can't, they, they, they don't even, they're not even in place to judge because they're not even real. They're already captive to the devil. So for you to sit up and um, act like you don't understand what they're going through because you don't understand because you're not really, you, you're not, you're not going through the same spiritual war that they're going through. Okay. Let's get that understood. Okay, but you can have a false, a, a real prophet contradict being a Christian, contradict being a spiritual person, and make mistakes. You can have a false, you can have a real prophet right on the streets out there drinking, smoking, doing all kind of things, running from their call with God, running from their call of God. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, Americans would say, oh, that's a false prophet. Uh, that person, they said it was a prophet. He's out here drinking and stuff. Did his prophecies come true? Then that's a real prophet. Just happen, happening to be living a life of sin that's that's backslidden and um, doing the wrong things. You know, I can show you, I can show you in the Bible. If you want to go through the Bible and talk about prophets that, uh, in far as sin, I can show you prophets that sin. I can show you prophets that did hideous things that that you have never even seen American Christians do, or American prophets do. You know, I can show you some some real sin that real prophets did, and that didn't make them false prophets. Their prophet prophecy still came true. It's just like a, an electrician. An electrician that, uh, fixes electricity. Uh, a plumber fix plumbing plum, uh, plumbing problems. It's the same thing with a prophet. A prophet prophesies. They bring forth prophecies. Okay, that's basically for foundationally what they do. If those prophecies come true, then they are true prophets. Okay, it's not about their morals. It's not about it's not about how perfect they're living that makes them a false prophet. See, America, that's that's a syndrome y'all have. Y'all have that false. Prophet syndrome. You're looking for a contradiction. You're looking for them to make mistakes. They're not perfect. Real prophets will never be perfect. I'm sorry to tell you. I'm sorry to disappoint you that any prophet that you ever find, if, if you follow them long enough, you will not, you will find that they're not perfect. 
Okay, that's the bottom line. You know what I'm saying? So if you're if you're following people around expecting some perfect angel, you're not going to find it in me. You're not going to find it in anybody else. But what makes them true as far as being a prophet is the things that they say does come to pass. That that's that's what a true prophet is. You know what I'm saying? That it's kind of self-explanatory. But for Americans, I hate to say it, that's not really spiritual people anyway. It's kind of a godless kind of society now. You don't have people that really understand even what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? They they hear a false prophet and they just think that that means that's a that's a person is uh that person is a false spiritual leader or a false teacher or a false Christian, and you're still even a real Christian if you make mistakes. I mean, you with that being said, you know, you're still a real Christian making all types of mistakes. I mean, it's just, it's common sense, though, to me. I mean, but some people, they just don't, I don't know. They just, I guess they think they have this image of what a Christian is or what a prophet is or, any, you know, any leader. I guess they have these perfect images in their mind. It's not reality. I guess that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? But when you bring a prophet down to earth or you bring any spiritual leader or any Christian down to earth, you're going to find... If they're human just like you. They're just like you. They have desires. They have feelings. They have anger. All the things that you feel as a human being. Same kind of species. Same type of creature that you are. All the things that you feel. That's what they feel too. Okay. So that being said. You know. That's the right context of. That a, a Christian or a prophet should be held in. You don't hold them to perfect standards and hold them to some standard that you're not living. You know, because I know you're not perfect. So how you expect them to be perfect? Okay, then. That part. Um, so I just wanted to clear that up because there's a lot of people out there. They'll just sit around and say, well, this person is a false. I've been hearing it in music. False prophet this. False prophet that. And I'm like, man, do y'all even know what y'all talk about? I mean, because really what, you, what you're what saying is a person that contradicts their walk with God. That's what you really are, are, are a deceptive person. But, but um, you're not, you, it, but when it's really broken down to what it actually means, where you actually get that from, it's talking about if they prophesy and it doesn't come true, that's very serious. That's very serious. People going around saying this is going to come to pass, that's going to come to pass, and it doesn't happen. That's very serious. You know, and then saying God's going to do it. God's going to do this or God's going to do that. <laughs> you know, that's very serious for someone to go around doing that and 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 it not be true you know so that's basically what that's about you know what i'm saying so i just want these americans to know because this is it's an american thing it's not everywhere you know it's this cultural american thing where people go around saying false prophet this false prophet that and 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 basically calling the person just just a bummer clot you know and and, and in in my opinion i mean in christianity we Anyone that's not a Christian is a bomb clot to us. That's how we see it. Y'all all bomb clots to 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 us. You're all bomb clots. I mean, if you're not walking with God, you're a bomb clot. If you're not, if you're fornicating, you're not married, you're a bomb clot. You know what I'm saying? If you if you, if, if if you're not walking with God and you find and you and you whatever you're doing that is not of God, you're a bomb clot to to a Christian. I'm just letting you know. So all the self-righteous people out there that, that, you know, you out there and you think you got yourself together, you think you're the man, you are, you're the woman, you think you're this, that, and the third, and you're going around calling people bummer clots and everything. I don't even really use that term, but, but I despise people that do because it's a very condescending term as if you're the oracle of righteousness. Like you have the right to say this person is righteous, that person is righteous, this and you and like like you like you have arrived at some place in your 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 
and your spirituality or who you are as a person to be able to point out other people's faults in this way. And you're not even righteous. You're not even living a biblical life and you're going around calling people bummer clots. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. It's time out for the foolishness. You know what I'm saying? The real bummer clots is people that don't follow God. Bottom line, you know what I'm saying? That make people get their life together. You want to know what that, hey, help, hopefully that help you get your life together because, you know, because that's how we see it. But we don't even go around doing that. You know, I'm a Christian. I don't go around doing it. I could. I could call, I mean, all America's, I could go around calling them bummer clocks. All of them. President and everything. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But but so that's for people that because the false prophet proclamations from people, people saying those the, the same type of people who turn around and say bomber clock too. False prophet, bomber clock, almost one and the same. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, like I said, if you ain't walking with God yourself, then you're a bomber clock too. Okay, sorry to tell you. All right. And that's the bottom line. You know, you can say what you want to say. You know what I'm saying? That's how we see it. You know, so. <clears throat> you know, I just wanted, I just want people to know, you know, about this false prophet thing. You know what I'm saying? I get tired of hearing it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's, it's kind of like an insinuation against Christians, period. It's like, it's almost like people that's, that's not even walking with God looking at Christians and looking at spiritual people and just saying false prophet. You know what I'm saying? When they see any contradictions or something they don't like, that's what they, they like to throw that term out there. You got to be careful, man. You got to be careful because the Bible says, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. That means no harm verbally, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, Doing them harm is only going to bring harm back on yourself. See, in America, <clears throat> you don't really find a lot, surprisingly, uh, shockingly, you don't find many real Christians. I mean, because, I mean, what it takes to be a real Christian, you can't be watching all the secular sitcoms that you've been watching. How can you entertain yourself with something and you're spiritual? How can you entertain yourself and watch the lives of people that do not live the life you live and find that entertaining? I just don't understand that. Being real, that should irk you. That should make you feel some type of way. That shouldn't, you shouldn't feel comfortable. You should not feel comfortable as a Christian watching something on TV that does not Live, that is not the same life is watching people that live a lifestyle that you don't live how can you feel comfortable how can that be entertainment how can you find pleasure out of that see what I'm saying that's what I'm saying you know we, we, we don't even know a lot of you guys in America y'all don't even know what it is to be a Christian you know what I'm saying real Christians go through real real warfare you know what I'm saying and they will contradict themselves. I mean, you go look in the Bible. But as far as a lifestyle, eventually, if you watch that person long enough, you're going to find out they're a Christian. If they're a real Christian, eventually. I don't care how long it takes. Some, If they live long enough, you're going to see that person is a Christian. And, and even while they even while they making mistakes, you're gonna still hear their belief in the Lord. A real Christian, you're gonna hear it, even though they making mistakes. You know what I'm saying? So, but but America is some of the most judgmental people, man. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it comes to Christians, and that, and this is time out for that too, because they'll be getting on these Muslims. They don't be they don't bother nobody else with any other relief, uh, any other religions. Uh, any other, yeah, any other belief system. They don't bother them, you know. But when it comes to Christians, I guess they feel like we the softies of religion. I guess that's what it is. 
Because they don't challenge nobody else. They sensitive to everybody else's feelings. But when it comes to a Christian, they all of a sudden, they want to stand up like they won't smoke. They want to pull up on. And we the real thing. That's the whole thing about it. You know? It's like we're the real thing. And it's like they want to pull up on us. I'm like, bro, you don't want that kind of smoke, man. I mean, really, you don't. Like, if you, I'm talking about a real Christian. I'm talking about somebody that don't watch secular TV. You can't even really get them to really pay attention to anything that's worldly. And they're, and they're fasting and praying. You don't want to smoke with people like that. You are asking for trouble. You asking for trouble on the double, buddy. You don't want no trouble like that. But but they not but Americans are not really used to really confronting a real Christian and seeing the backfiring effects. They're not really used to it. They're not really used to it because a lot of Christians here, they don't really get that real time, that devotion time with God, like really living righteous. They don't really got that time on their under their belt. They really don't. So most people that they confront, most people that Americans confront are people that don't have a real serious, serious walk with God. So that nothing really happened. I mean, you will be surprised of how many powerless churches there are in this country, too. And so then when you finally find a real Christian a real and a prophet and you playing games you're in trouble you're gonna get all the smoke you want and some I'm telling you you don't play you don't play with, that's a lion man you ask you're gonna be devoured go check the bible go check the bible on how what real prophets did real prophets even killed children yeah go look at the bible prophet elijah killed 42 children Prophet Elisha, it's spelled E L I S H A. Elisha. Yeah, that's that's not the kind of smoke you want, man. <laughs> Prophets going around killing children. You don't want that kind of smoke, man. I'm telling you, you think you do. You don't. You can say, well, and then see if that had happened here in America, y'all talking about real prophet, false prophet? That's what a real prophet did. You ain't ready for a real prophet. You talking about false prophet, prophet, false prophet. You are not ready for a real one. Real one will mess around and kill your children. You keep playing. <laughs> it's all about, but it's about respect, spiritual respect, spiritual authority. You don't play around us like we some animal at the zoo. Okay, you get your head bit off. You jump over the fence. That being disrespect, you're going to get your head bit off. And there's not going to be no apologies. Okay? There's not going to be no apologies for you, for you, to you. <laughs> you know? You will respect spiritual authority. I'll, I'll pay the price. That's what Y'all not used to real profits over here. You know what I'm saying? In, in America, y'all not used to that. That's why you think, oh, a church attending person, this is person of church attending. And you think that's all it is because that's all you ever been. That's all you ever seen these people be in this community. You know what I'm saying? That's all you seen them do. Go back and forth to church. Like you thought it was a religious thing. Then you realize this person is spiritual. Now you got a problem. Now you now you can't get that power off your head. You know what I'm saying? Now they on your neck, you know what I'm saying? You, you know you don't play with you don't play with real prophets. By the way, while we on the subject, okay? When you do find one that you esteem that is real, that's not your plaything. That's not your plaything, okay? We at the top of this food chain. We at the top of the spiritual food chain. That means voodoo, hoodoo, all that is under us. I had a voodoo practitioner tell me I got good spirits around me. A voodoo man. Something that y'all will be scared of. Y'all be scared of the voodoo man. And the voodoo man told me I got good spirits around me. He ain't, he ain't do nothing to me. You understand? 
Yeah. Y'all, uh, you know what I'm saying? I got my respect from him. You know what I'm saying? That's why I, I just, how I carry, I, I, I would not tolerate any disrespect. Where I live at, if you take something from me, if you do anything to violate me, anything, I'm going, I promise you, you will pay a price. Okay? You will. All right? Because what people think is, is Christians, they think we the softies of, uh, of religion or spirituality. They think there's nothing can happen. They like to play around us. And then when something happens, oh, I thought you was a Christian. What that mean? I supposed to be, what that, what that mean? I supposed to be nice to you while you, <laughs> and you're trying to hurt me and harm me? I supposed to ignore you and you're trying to bring wars around me. What does that mean? When you say that, define that. Because what that sounds like to me is you're saying that, oh, you can hit me, you can mistreat me, you can do me in kind of way. And because I'm a Christian, I supposed to behave nicely. I supposed to behave uh, with good manners. And that's not even biblical, biblically uh, supported. You can't get into the support of the Bible. You can't use a couple scriptures. You can't use... What I would suggest you do, what I would do, is I would look at the scriptures that... I would go try to find something that contradict that. Not something that support it. <laughs> you know, you talk... You, you, you're looking for Christians to be nice. You should go look for where the service of God wasn't necessarily nice. That's what you need to go look at. Because, I mean, killing 42 children, that's, that's pretty brutal. You can't even find a voodoo man that would do that. Yet, the servant of God did that. But you would hate that man to death. In this culture, in America, you, would, you wouldn't be able to stand a prophet like Elijah because he killed 42 children. You would just think that's absolutely unnecessary. But you fail to understand that we are at the top of the food chain. You would not play with us like human beings. You would not play with us at all. You, your children, nobody. Your animals either. Nobody. And when you realize that, then you you will understand. Then you're coming into a greater understanding. Okay, order. This is order. This is leadership, order, and structure of society. The real structure of society. What does it look like? The the highest structure of society getting tossed around and played around with. It's not gonna happen. You think it's gonna happen. What you're gonna realize is it was it was a heavy price to play playing around the highest levels of authority in, in, in the community, in the world. You don't play with us. And you think that's, um, oh, me saying that like I'm a 15-year-old kid trying to uh, pick a fight. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not, look, you know, this is not something you want to challenge. Okay? You'll make the paper. You'll make the news. You will make the news. You, the whole apartment place, the whole neighborhood, all make the news. Playing around a man of God. We ain't playing no games. I ain't playing a bit of games with you. Why? That's clowns. I'm not a clown. I don't sit back and play games. And that's why I never liked clowns as a kid. I never liked clowns. Cause it's really not a clown. Is really not a nice entity or thing it's really not a clown is not a nice thing if you notice it just does all these tricks and it's smiling but it does all these little foolish all these little tricks that's why some kids don't like clowns think about it why doesn't a kid like clowns because they can see that it's really not a nice thing <laughs> a clown is not a nice thing i don't like clowns man and that's where people are to do things that like go around and playing games in society and smiling and smiling in your face, playing games. I'm not, I'm look, I don't play with clowns, man. I never liked clowns in my life. 
I never was scared of them. I just never liked them. They just never was entertaining, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you know, but yeah, man, that's all I wanted to say on the false prophet situation. And um, all you people out there calling people false prophets and you're not a Christian, you the one to bomb a clock, man. I'm telling you. Let me. T I just want to let you know that. While you out there... Why you out there talking about people fake and this that person fake and real gangsters real this and real that to us you you a bum clap. I'm just keeping a hundred. I'm just keeping a hundred. You know what I'm saying? And and don't don't complain around us. Okay, we're gonna treat you like a bum clap. You're gonna see. You're gonna look like a bum clap when you get when you, when we get finished with you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is not no games. We will be respected if it, it. We are more valuable if it comes down to one of us in a million of y'all. That one person is gonna live, and you gonna die. If you're not valued in our kingdom, then why should all of y'all live? And that one person that's valued in our kingdom dies. It doesn't make sense. That one person means everything to us, and you mean nothing. Make sense? A million of y'all, not in our kingdom, why would y'all live? Millions of y'all, not in this kingdom. So why when the kingdom of heaven comes and looks, why is they gonna say why is he gonna say why is he gonna deal with you? And this person is 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 a part of the kingdom of God. It don't work like that. You a million of y'all will perish and the person of God will live. I'm sorry to tell you, this ain't no game. You're going to see, though. You tried to make some little innovative new thing in your American society. It backfired. And now you're going to see what's now you're going to come back down to reality.